Osteoporosis and osteopetrosis are two skeletal disorders that while both affecting bone density, present with markedly different radiographic features. And so understanding the differences is important in a radiographic setting, especially because the names are just so similar. I know, it's also confusing, right? It is, it is so confusing. So in this quick explainer, I wanted to compare the two and talk about their radiographic appearances. Let's go. Let's first start off with osteoporosis, as that's by far the most common condition. So osteoporosis is a disease that weakens your bones by reducing the bone density, which as you can imagine can cause a whole host of problems, the most obvious being that it makes breaking your bones a lot easier. The main radiographic feature of osteoporosis is what we call generalized osteopenia. And it's just basically meaning a condition in which the proteins and mineral content of your bone tissue is reduced. And it just manifests as a thinning appearance or a reduced radiolucency of the bone, aka when the bone looks more see-through. Other than that, the key radiographic signs include cortical thickening, trabecular changes, fracture susceptibility, and decreased bone mass. So let's go through each and see what they mean. Cortical thickening is when the bone cortex, which is the dense structure surrounding the bone marrow, becomes thinner, where essentially the outer edges of the long bone shows a reduction in thickness. Then we have trabecular changes, which refers to changes in what we call the bone texture, right? Because on an X-ray, it looks like it has a textured appearance. And when more of that bone mineral density is reduced, it looks like the trabeculae or spongy pattern of the bone has changed. And it often leads to a ground glass appearance, which is that hazy gray looking thing that refers to, well, ground glass. In advanced cases, the trabeculae may become so sparse that the bone has a washed out appearance because the X-ray energies for that anatomy and thickness and density are just too high. Fracture susceptibility, well that one's in the name, right? It's when the osteoporotic bones are just prone to fractures, particularly compression fractures in the vertebra, which present as a vertebral body collapsing in on itself as a result of some compression force. But it doesn't have to be in the spine, it could manifest in any bone, but two of the most common areas are the hips and the wrists. And lastly, decreased bone mass, which is just the overall reduction in bone mass and density, which makes sense. When you think about it, see what's happening to the outer edges of the bone, the cortex, and what's happening on the inside, which is the changes in trabeculae. Now, the extent of bone mass loss is measured using what's called the DEXA scan, but you can see the effects in general x-rays too. So here's an example of what osteoporosis looks like. Especially when compared to a normal hip x-ray, it becomes a bit more obvious. Again, think about what the radiographic signs were where it's mainly decreased bone mass, which presents as cortical thickening, and also trabeculae changes. And you can see both of those. The cortex is a bit thinner, especially towards the proximal hip area, but really it's just the lack of the density in the bone that gives it away. And by the way, I mean the bone being more gray than white, where it almost starts blending in with the soft tissue in the background. Now in this one, it isn't as obvious, but you can also expect to see some changes in the bone texture or the bony trabeculae pattern, where you might have less of that pattern showing up given the decreased bone density. Here's another example, but now in the hand, and you can see very clearly the differences in cortical thickness on the left, which is osteoporotic, compared to the one on the right, which is a normal hand x-ray. And just ignore the extreme contrast differences between the bones, and in this case, I think it's probably more due to post-processing, but even then, you can tell when it comes to the density of the bone to the surrounding soft tissue, it's a lot more similar on the osteoporotic x-ray than the normal density on the x-ray. And lastly, here's another example of osteoporosis in the knees. You can tell immediately the decrease density in the bone, particularly how similar it is to the density to the surrounding soft tissue, the thinning of the cortex, especially compared to the normal knee x-ray. So hopefully that's very obvious to you now. All right, that was osteoporosis. And remember, this is a very common condition affecting over 50 million people in the US alone. And it's especially common in people over 50, where about half of all females and a quarter of all males over the age of 50 will have some level of osteoporosis. And if not, then they do have some degree of reduced bone density which we call osteopenia. Now these words all kind of sound the same, right? Which can get quite confusing. But anyway, let's move on to the next condition. So now let's talk about osteopetrosis, a very similar sounding word, but almost the complete opposite of osteoporosis. It's a rare genetic disorder that actually allows the bones to grow abnormally and become overly dense. And so this defective bone resorption, which basically means the inability to remove the old bone, is characteristic of osteopetrosis and is quite obvious on a radiograph. The key radiographic signs could include the following. Generalized sclerosis, thickening of the cortices, absent medullary cavity, bone in bone appearance, and what's called the Erlenmeyer flask deformity. So let's go through each and see what they mean. Generalized sclerosis. Try saying that five times. So sclerosis just means increased bone density and generalized is just referring to it being the case all over the bones. 
So we can say osteopetrosis is primarily characterized by the diffuse increase in bone density. But the bones if they're uniformly dense and opaque on x-rays, sometimes described as having a marble or ivory appearance. Thick and cortices. So unlike osteoporosis where the cortical thinning was prominent, osteopetrosis presents with markedly thickened cortices, the opposite. Makes sense, right? But despite that, it's interesting to note that this increased density makes the bone more brittle and prone to pathological fractures, which are fractures caused as a result of having some pathology, in this case, osteopetrosis. And by the way, a fracture caused by osteoporosis is also referred to as a pathological fracture, just so we're on the same page. Basically, a fracture caused by any pathology. Osteopetrosis could also present in an absent medullary cavity where the medullary cavity is the central part of the bone shaft that includes the bone marrow. And in this condition, it's often obliterated or significantly narrowed due to the excessive bone formation. So there's less space in the bone marrow. You could also see a bone in bone appearance, which is one of the hallmark signs of osteopetrosis, where secondary ossification centers are visible within the medullary cavity. Basically, the bone looks like it has another bone within itself. And these are most commonly seen in the vertebra and the long bones. And lastly is what we call the Erlenmeyer flask deformity which is really referring to the Erlenmeyer flask from chemistry class. And it's basically when the metaphysis of the long bone, that is a bit towards the ends, often shows a flaring, which leads to that characteristic Erlenmeyer flask shape, which is really just a failure of the normal bone modeling, resulting in this lack of that tapering at the ends of the long bone. So here's an example of what osteopetrosis looks like. Immediately, I hope you can tell that there's a major difference between a normal pelvis x-ray and this. And thinking about what the main radiographic features are, they were generalized sclerosis, thickened cortices, and an absent of the medullary cavity, all of which you can see here. There's increased bone density basically everywhere around the pelvis, hips, and the lower lumbar spine area that we can see. And the boundary between the cortex and the medullary cavity is almost blurred, given how thick and dense the bone has become. Here's another example, this time looking at the lumbar spine AP and lateral. Again, you can see generalized sclerosis and a very severe thickened cortices, but now it's what's interesting is that you can see that bone in bone appearance as well that we talked about earlier. And the arrows are just pointing to this hyper dense bone structure that has this bone in bone sandwiching vertebra effect, which is visible on both the AP and the lateral projections. And finally, here's another example of osteopetrosis, this time in the femur. Now there's a lot of deformities both in the hip joints and towards the knee, which isn't normal. But again, thinking back at the radiographic features, we still see all the things we talked about in the previous example, which were generalized sclerosis, thickening of the cortices. But what we also see here is that Erlenmeyer flask deformity in the distal femur. See how it resembles that Erlenmeyer flask? Which I guess where it gets its name from. Now hopefully you're seeing how different this is to osteoporosis, which is almost like the opposite in terms of radiographic appearance. One is very hollow and radiopaque, aka see-through, so is osteoporosis, and the other is quite radiodense is osteopetrosis. All right, that's it for this one. I hope you now know the differences between osteoporosis and osteopetrosis. The words are very similar, but as you've seen, the radiographic appearances are definitely not. Now, if you got any value from this, give it a like, and you might also be interested in the last video I made, which was on the difference between osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. So be sure to click here to watch that. See you there, stay curious. Alrighty. Nailed it.